Okay, hi everyone. Uh, I will talk about my uh, library I created a couple of years ago that I have worked with together with some uh, great contributions from the community. It's called Tiny MVVM. It's MVVM framework built for Xamarin Forms. Uh, so I will talk a little bit about how you can use it, and but I also will talk about how it works under the hood. Uh, so my name is Daniel Hindrikes, and uh, I'm working from a consult company in Sweden called 1337, 1337, if you translate it to English. Uh, I'm a co-author of Summer Forms uh, projects, a book published by Pact. Uh, we released the second edition uh, this summer. I wrote it together with Johan Karlsson, also a long-time Summer developer. Uh, I'm also a podcaster, mostly in Swedish, but um, if you want to learn Swedish or speak Swedish, just turn in. The code behind is the name. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. I use the blog a bit at danielhindrikes.se. And I also uh, have some plans to start streaming some Samarin and Azure stuff on my Twitch channel. Uh, but I will probably start with that next week. Uh, so there are no content yet there. So, but why? Did I create Tiny MVVM? There are a couple of good MVVM frameworks or libraries out there already. MVVM Cross, MVVM Lite, uh, Prison. Uh, I have tried all of those, but they didn't fit me very well. Uh, the one that works best for me was probably Tiny. Uh, not Tiny. That's my library. Uh, MVVM Lite. Uh, I don't say that none of, of the others are good. They are good, but they don't fit my needs and uh, I don't want to have a very big library either. So uh, I had an idea once after that I was pretty tired of some of the MVM stuff. I maybe don't need an MVM framework uh, because some reforms have great stuff built in uh, with bindings and things like that. But uh, uh, I started to think about it, uh, develop some app. It's pretty nice to have uh, the view model clean from Xamarin Forms references, so you can use them uh, if you're using other uh, UI frameworks. For example, now when we will soon migrate to .NET MAUI, it will be easier to migrate to it if you don't have uh, references to UI framework in the view models. So it started with me created a library called Tiny Navigation Helper that was just for the navigation part. Uh, but then I realized uh, I tend to uh, reuse a lot of code between my apps. I copy paste it or I rewrote it. I think I wrote a blog post of how I used to do uh, in uh, my apps. Uh, so, but later I realized it was, would be much easier if I packaged it up uh, and created a library of it. So that it was became tiny MVM. I also used Tiny Navigation Helper as a part of the Tiny MVM to, for the navigation parts. Uh, so I will talk later how I did that. Uh, but here are some of the main features of Tiny MVM. We have an IOC helper uh, and a resolver uh, that helps the developer using IOC stuff. And it also is used by uh, Tiny MVM internally. Uh, we have the navigation helper that is an abstraction of the navigation parts from Xamarin Forms. And it's also pretty easy to build it out with uh, other navigation stuff. So I uh, worked with a client a couple of years ago where I needed to do some uh, VPF stuff. So I built a navigation helper for that. It's, you can find it on GitHub, but I don't uh, maintain that part anymore. Uh, then I have a base class for views. Uh, and I have a base class for view models. Uh, the base class for view models is probably the one that we that we uh, work with mostly, but we needed to have the base class uh, for the views as well to get some of the features in the view model that I will show you soon to work. And then I have created an I command implementation because .NET doesn't have an implementation of I command. So, um, I created my own, Xamarin Forms has one, but if you want to have your view models clean from Xamarin Forms references, you need to create your own. So that's a part of the package TinyMVM as well. So how to get started? Uh, all docs are 
on the GitHub, uh, on the repository, tiny MVM, in the tiny stuff organization, because there are some other libraries I have created and my colleagues uh, have created as well. Tiny cache, we have uh, tiny pub sub and uh, tiny insights, for example. They're also there. Uh, I will show you the link to it later. But to get started, the first thing you need to do is to install NuGet packages. Uh, for some informed projects, uh, the project where you have your UI code, you need to install two packages, tinyvm.forms, and then you need to install a provider for your IOC stuff. So I have created Autofac and tinyioc, but uh, it's pretty easy to create your own provider if you have some other libraries that you prefer. Uh, but tinyvm.autofac for Autofac and tinyvm, tinyioc for tinyioc. Uh, what I have learned is that uh, tiny EOC is uh, much faster than Autofac. And you, if you go to my blog, you can read more about that. Uh, but on the other hand, Autofac have some more features that you don't have in tiny IOC. Uh, for core projects, if you separate uh, your projects in Visual Studio, for example, you can maybe have your view models in a separate project. You can just install the base NuGet package tiny VM there. And there are some other packages on uh, NuGet called TinyMVM as well, but you can see those that are mine is published under my name. So, so let's leave PowerPoint and go to Visual Studio, the fun part. Uh, so what I will show you here today is a code that are available on the TinyMVM uh, repository. So. I will show you first how you can use it. So you can use TinyMVM with both the classic way to work with navigation, and you can use it together with uh, some reform shell. I will start to show you first the classic way. So here you have a sample solution folder that is named classic, and that's the classic part of it, or the old part, but I prefer to call it the classic part because it's not old in that way. You can still use it and it works well, and some people prefer to not use shell. I love to use shell, but for some uh, reasons and for some apps, it's probably better to use the classic way to work with navigation. So the first thing you need to do is go to the app.saml.cs, or the first thing after that you have installed the NuGet packages. So in the constructor, you can uh, have it in a separate class uh, if you want to, but you need to call this code from the constructor of the app uh, class. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is to set up the navigation helper. Uh, to do that, we create a new instance of forms navigation helper. Uh, in this example, I register all views in the, this assembly uh, and they will get the a key, uh, all views are mapped to a key. So if you want, you can also do like this, navigation helper dot register view, uh, give it a key, I, and then you can define what view it will map to. And you can also, after that, uh, you have register all views in assembly. If you do that, they will get the, key, the name of the view will get be the key. So, but if you want, you can override that. For example, if uh, you want an, another view to be loaded when you navigate to the key on a desktop app or a tablet app, for example, you can do that pretty easy like this. Then you can uh, register a view that will override uh, what you recently registered like this. Uh, so instead of main view, you maybe want to load the details view of some reasons uh, in that case. So that's possible to do. Uh, the next thing you need to do is to define the IOC part and create a container. Uh, this example are using the outfac. A container, so we create a new container builder, and then we registered the instance of the iNavigation helper interface, and that is the forms navigation helper in this case. Uh, then we also need to register all views to the container and all the view models like this. 
you can also do this one by one if you want to, but I, uh, I think it's pretty neat to do it like this. Okay, it will probably affect the performance a little bit to do a assembly scan, uh, but it has worked well for me. And the last thing we need to do is to uh, set what resolver that we'll use. So in this case, when we're using the out effect resolver, we, we call new out effect resolver, and then we pass the container to it. Uh, and the out effect resolver is the one class that be installed when you install the NuGet package tinyvan.outofact. And then we can set the main page. Uh, you can do like this, but if you're using the classic way to uh, navigate, it's probably better to do like this, navigation helper dot at root view, and that will replace the main page. And uh, you're doing this, you will have a navigation page by default, but if you don't want the navigation page, you can just pass false here. And this you can use wherever you want. You can also access the navigation helper by its static proper current. This, and then you have all navigation properties here. Oh, Ooh, that's part so it's possible to run it later. So when we have done this, we are ready to start to code on our application. So we can take a look at a view model, for example, here, uh, main view model. We have view model base as uh, the base class for uh, all our new, all all our view models. Often in a real app, you maybe create a, a own base view model to have in the middle here, if you want to have own uh, base logic. But as you can see, what we get from the view model base is we have an override of initialize that will run when uh, the view model is created and the binding contest is set. We have on a pairing that will be mapped to the on a pairing from views from uh, some strict and then people probably not like this, but I think this makes at least me very productive to have this in the view model. Otherwise I need to call code from my view model when those events happen. So I think it's nice to have them here. We also have an override for uh, first pair that we can use. So oh, when we want to navigate to uh, a view, for example, here, if you click the details uh, button in the view, we create a new tiny command, uh, just like with some reinforms command, it's nothing special there. And then we have navigation from uh, navigation property from the view model base that we can use. Uh, so we have all methods here. So then we can navigate to a sync uh, that and we can pass a parameter to it as well. So that's pretty nice if you compare to the some reforms uh, navigation service. Uh, and here you also have methods for open a model, for example. And it's worked the same. You can pass a key and you can pass uh, if you want with the navigation page. Uh, if you navigate to a view and you're inside a tab page or even a master data page, it will know what tab you are inside. So the navigation will be in that navigation page for that tab. So that's pretty nice. Uh, especially with master digital, data page, it could be a little bit complicated to do the navigation, uh, but um, TinyMM handles all that for you. Uh, so what we need to do in the views is that we need to set view base as uh, the base class for the view. And um, to set the view model, we don't need to do it in the code behind. Uh, we can just do it like this, x type colon type arguments, because view base is a generic class. There are also a non-generic class if you don't want to set view model like this is in views. But to get all the life cycle events like initialize on appearing on disappearing to work in the view model, you need to use the view base uh, as a base class for your view. So let's take a look at uh, the shell part. Uh, 
Also, here is everything set up in the appsaml.cs. It's pretty much the same, uh, but instead of the forms navigation helper, you will use the shell navigation helper. Uh, you can register all the views in assemblies. What's nice here is with shell and navigation helper, you can also use uh, view model navigation. Um, and that is a feature that Shane from the summary forms team uh, created on his one of his live streams. So I have added it to uh, to him because he sent the code to me. Uh, so that's pretty nice and uh, a feature that I'm using all the time. Uh, I will show you later how that works under the hood. Uh, and then you will set main page as the app shell. So you should not use the, the set root view method here. You should just create a new shell. Uh, and the shell will look exactly as uh, it will if you don't use TinyMVM. No TinyMVM tiny stuff inside here. But if you go to the views, uh, you can use the same view base if you want to, but uh, it will get a better experience uh, if you use shell view base because there are some lifecycle events that will work better uh, if you use shell view base, for example initialize will run earlier. If you don't use shell view base, it will run initialize uh, on appearing. Uh, and uh, you probably want it to run when the binding context is set. So let's take a look about how navigation can look with a shell. Um, you still have the navigate to a sync, but instead of sending a key in here, you can send a URL to it. So in this case, we create a URL with the name of the details view model. Uh, then we can pass a query parameters like this. And we can also pass a, a navigation parameter as we can could do before. So if you go to the details view model to take a look how we will receive that is that query parameters will be in a dictionary called query parameters. You don't have to do that parsing on yourself. You don't have to add properties for it. Uh, and you don't have to pass it to the view model uh, by yourself. That is handled by TinyMVM. So query parameters, if you want to access the other navigation parameter, you can do it with the navigation parameters. So all this is handled by the view model base class. So that's basically how you can uh, use TinyMVM. We will also say that uh, the only method that is changed in the navigation helper for shell is the navigate to a sync because uh, you don't need to go back. You don't need to open model. If you use them, it will fall back on the classic navigation. Uh, and that could be cases where you want that. If, for example, if you want to open a model and you want to have a navigation page in it with a top bar and things like that, you can fall back to use navigation or open uh, model async. Uh, otherwise, you can set presentation mode uh, on the page if you want to have it as a model like this, uh, just use the navigation, navigate to method, presentation mode model, exactly as you should do with a normal shell navigation. So now we have done a quick uh, walkthrough how to use TinyMVM. There are also docs that you can read on uh, on the GitHub repo. So browse in there if you want to read more about how to use it. And now we will take a look how it's working on the, the hood and how I have built it. Uh, so we are still in the same repository. We can minimize the samples uh, folder. Then we can see that here we have tiny navigation helper. Tiny navigation helper is a separate uh, repository, but I have added it as a submodule. In the first versions, uh, TinyMVM 1.x, it was a um, NuGet reference, but uh, to decrease the number of the uh, assemblies referenced in or up, I added a submodule. It's compiled in, in the, to the same assembly as TinyMVM. Uh, so that's one of the things that introduced together with shell navigation in 2.0 of uh, tiny MVM. So let's start with take a look at the navigation helper because that's what I started with tiny MVM. So we have an abstraction layer. It's just 
interfaces and things that is shared between all of uh, we have the iNavigation helper interface with all the navigation methods. We have a view creator, uh, and we have this helper class. So you can use the navigation helper.current method if you want to. We have a parameter setter that helps us uh, when creating views, and we have a view creation exception. Uh, but all relevant code is here in the forms navigation helper. So let's take a look at that. Uh, here we have a dictionary with all views that we have registered. Uh, uh, so when we register a view with, uh, with the method uh, uh, register all views in an assembly, for example, it will be added to this dictionary. Uh, then we will use the default view creator. If you are using TinyMVM, we'll use TinyMVM view creator. I'll show that later. Uh, register view is just adding things to to the dictionary, uh, navigate to, ha, here we can take a look at the navigate to async method. So it will keep track if you are in a model navigation page, it will keep track if you are in a tabbed page. Uh, so it will know what uh, navigation page it should use. Uh, and you can also reset the stack here if you want, there are a lot of code here that can be pretty uh, complicated to write all the time and you don't it can be hard to keep track on uh, navigation pages and so on in your app but uh, TinyMVM will do that all for you uh, yeah so it here you have the tab page uh, to take a look what is the selected tab uh, and then we'll push to that navigation page because often you want to have one navigation page in each tab of a tab page. Uh, you have the same for master detail page. If you're doing navigation inside of a details view, for example, you don't want the whole page to navigate. You want just that navigation page. Uh, so it will check if you are in that case. And it's also check if you are in detail page or master detail page and it's a tab view. It will handle that for you as well, like this. Uh, navigate to async, uh, um, navigate to uh, is just helper method and the view creators. Uh, we can take a look at the, the at the tiny MV create view creator because here is some of the interesting stuff. Uh, so when you create a view, uh, it will use uh, the IOC if it's possible. If not, it will use uh, system.activator, but probably if you use TinyMVM, uh, you are in a context where you have IOC uh, enabled. So what it will do is it will create a page and will we'll set that it's created by TinyMVM. Then will, it, will be create, it will create the view model from what you have set in the generic type argument. Uh, it will set it up as binding context, and it will also uh, run uh, initialize. It will run, uh, uh, yeah, it will run initialize here and later it will run on appearing that we will see when we take a look at the, the view base, but it also ensure that, uh, that uh, initialize has finished, the run of initialize has finished before it running on appearing because we have a semaphore slim here that, uh, make sure that it run in the correct order. So if we take a look at uh, uh, this uh, view base, you can see here we have the non-generic one, and then here we have uh, the generic one. The most of the code is in uh, the non-generic one because it's a base class to this generic view base. Um, there are some shell stuff here that we will take a look at later. But here you can see it's if you don't have a view model and it's not created, by, the view is not is created by TinyMVM, it will create a view model for you. Uh, and here we all can also see how it uh, maps the on appearing stuff. Uh, and it will also ensure that it's running in a certain context. Uh, so you don't have to think about that yourself when you're doing 
stuff in the on disappearing or on appearing methods in the uh, the view model. Tiny MM is handled that for you, and it also makes sure that it's running on uh, on the main thread. Uh, so we can take a look here at an on appearing. Uh, if view model int uh, is not null, it will run this. It will check the 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 read lock so that initialized has completed. Uh, and it will check if it's not initialized for some reasons, maybe not initialized by TinyMVM. It will run that code. And then it will run on appearing. And it will also run on first appear if an appear not have occurred already. And then it will release lock so you can run continue with it. Uh, here we also have some old code for set up UI action that makes it possible to invoke things on the UI thread uh, from the view model, but I have set that method to uh, deprecate it now because I think it's better to use uh, the main thread stuff from Xamarin Essentials. But Xamarin Essentials was not uh, available when I first created TinyMVM, and now it's also part of the, the default templates for Xamarin projects. So I think it's better to use that one. Uh, if we are working with Shell, we have the shell navigation helper here uh, that have a register root method. Uh, you don't have to use this. You can set root in SAML, for example, and you can use this method directly in your initializing, initializing code if you want to. Uh, but you can also use this one if you want. Uh, uh, then we have an override of the navigate to a sync method, and we also have an override for uh, internal register view. And here is the part when you're creating uh, and setting up for a view model navigation. It will go to the to the view, check uh, if it's a generic view and it ha has type arguments, then it will take the name of the view model and register that as a route. And that's why you can use a view model navigation and, or you can create a URL from your view model name, as I showed you earlier. And you can see in the sample project for Tiny. So what happens when you navigate with Shell? First of all, it will check if uh, we have registered the view in uh, the old classic way. Then it will use that type of navigation. If not, it will create a Tiny ID that is used for the query parameters and the navigation parameters. So all navigation that happened uh, with the tiny MVM and the shell navigation helper will have a tiny ID to it like this in the end of the query parameters. Uh, then we'll add it to the query, and then we will add the parameters to this uh, dictionary that we have for the tiny navigation helper. And then in uh, the view model, we can pick it up by using the uh, the tiny ID. You can take a look at uh, the view here first. So here we set that we have a query property as we do with shell and uh, query properties. And uh, here we also have the property for it. And in the setter, we check if you have a binding context that is view model base, and then we can get the query parameters from the navigation helper and we can set them as a dictionary of the, uh, the view model query parameters and we can do the same with the navigation parameters so it makes it accessible from the view model then we will run uh, those methods for initialize for example uh, we have also a check here if is shell view uh, we will run those methods if they don't have run already. Uh, so what shell view base is, is basically it just pass true to the view base constructor. We can do that from the code behind if you don't want to use shell view base uh, in views if you want to as well. So in uh, the view model base, uh, as I showed you before, we have this navigation parameter, we have query parameters that 
will be set uh, when we navigate into a view. Uh, here we also have some method that I don't have uh, talked about yet, and it's navigate to an open model. That makes it possible to define a key and a navigation in uh, the SAML file. And this is a contribution from uh, Johan Carlson. Uh, I don't use it that often, but this could be pretty usable in some, some uh, cases. Yes, and we also have some uh, helper method for an is busy that triggers a uh, race property change for is not busy as well if you don't want to use an invert converter uh, in um, your SAML file to handle is busy. You can see if the view is initialized, we have some helper method and implementation of I notify property changed uh, interface here as well. So that's basically how tiny ambivam is working. Uh, you can see here we have the URL to the GitHub repo, github.com slash tiny stuff tiny ambivam. There you can find docs, samples, and all the source code. Uh, now we have some minutes left for questions. I will take a look at the chat to see if uh, there are any questions uh, for me to answer. We don't use any. Tiny has 160 and it's NuggetPay has had 3000 downloads. Yeah, uh, I think it's pretty about $10,000, but it's not very much used. Uh, I know that, uh, but I know that some people that have used it think it's great. Um, Uh, so especially shall yeah shall say that uh, uh, many big MVM frameworks don't support shell, and that's true. And I know some of them working on it. Prism, for example, uh, someone John said that he's pretty happy with tiny MVM. If a package does, doesn't have many contributes and it's not actively updated, I will never use it as a comment, uh, but uh, uh, I would say that Tiny MVM is uh, uh, actively updated. It's me updated. It's when my colleagues, Johan and Mats, uh, is working with it. Uh, I also have some contributions from Steven for Tiny, Tiny Navigation Helper. Uh, yeah, Steven says that the amount of downloads says nothing about the commitment of development. Now I'm using Tiny MVM for all my apps and I have done that for two to three years and I think it works well. Okay, I don't think there are any more questions right now. If you have questions, you can uh, get in touch uh, with me uh, on Twitter at Hindrikes. Uh, it's the easiest way. Uh, of course, you can create an uh, issue on uh, GitHub if you have questions or if you have feedback. Feedback are very welcome because I want to make TinyMVM uh, better. And of course, you're welcome to contribute. If you find bugs, uh, have features that you want to include, just create a pull request and I will take a look at them. And if it fits what I think should be in TinyMVM, I will merge it. I have a couple of pull requests that I have merged, for example, from Shane, from Steven, and some other great community members that have helped me with TinyMVM. Otherwise, thank you for listening. Uh, this has been a great day so far and uh, hope you will stay tuned for all the day. I will listen to all the other sessions as well. Thank, thank you. you so much. That, that was awesome. Um, so just for everybody, go, go check it out. We'll, uh, we'll update the links on our website. And uh, 
at the GitHub repository mentioned, um, you can have a look at the slides afterwards. Um,